Hello, and welcome to the Digital Orphanage. In this episode, we look at how you can unbrick certain action cameras. Here we have a Silvercrest 4K action camera, sold by Lidl. I was experimenting with custom firmware on this one, and no amount of button pressing will persuade it to switch on now. Not even the LED switches on. However, there are some signs of life as the charge LED lights up when a USB charger is connected. So maybe all is not lost. Programming the firmware on devices like this usually depends on it working in the first place, and breaking it in this way is usually called bricking a device, as in to turn it into something as useful as a brick. Well, for less than £8 I can repair this myself. First I remove the battery. You may notice I put the lens protector back on too. This will prevent it being scratched by accident. Then I gently prise off the front cover. This exposes the metal case and four small crosshead screws, which I remove. This allows the whole front of the case to be lifted away. No more screws holding the electronics inside the case, but there are three ribbon cables connected to the ports and buttons, and these need to be disconnected. The dark part of the connector flips up, allowing the cables to be removed. I can then lift out the camera from its case. But not fully, as it's still connected to the speaker with soldered cables. However, I don't need to unsolder these, as I now have access to the firmware chip. This is a Winbond 25Q128JV, 128 megabit of serial flash memory in a package that uses very little in the way of space, pins or power to provide somewhere to store a firmware that gets copied to RAM and executed. Pin 1 is denoted by the round hollow. And for less than £8 delivered from a well-known auction site, a CH341A programmer with all the cables needed can be purchased to program this chip. The important cable being this 8-pin Small Outline Integrated Circuit or SOIC clip. I make sure all the pins are pushed to the end of the clip as they can easily be pulled back on these cheap devices. The red stripe indicates pin 1, so I need to connect this to pin 1 on the chip, denoted by the round hollow. I take my time to ensure all the pins are lined up and making a good connection. At the programmer end, I need pin 1 on the cable aligned with the pin 1 on the small adapter board. This in turn goes into the first bank of 8 connector holes in the orientation shown and locked into place. I then plug this into a PC in this case, an old 32-bit netbook running Windows 10. When I switch on, a red light appears on the adapter to show it's working. 
the CH341A programmer does not come with any software, but there are several you could use. I'm going to use the AS programmer, which can be downloaded from the author's GitHub page. I've included a link in this video's description. The version I'm using in this video is 1.4.1. .1. It also comes with a CH341A Windows device driver that is compatible with this device. Apart from the driver, the software doesn't need to be installed. Just unzip to your hard disk and run the asprogrammer.exe. If using for the first time, ensure CH341A is selected under the hardware menu. I've made a shortcut to the programmer on my desktop to make launching it easier. If everything is installed and connected correctly, when I click the Read ID button, I get a choice of several chips the software thinks might be connected. I found W25Q128BV works fine with the chip inside this camera, so I select it and close the window. To test, I can then select the Read IC option, which does exactly what it says and reads the whole of the flash memory. This can take a while, so I'll speed up the video. You can use this function to read the BIOS of a good device to be used to rescue another of the same type. You'll see it's worked because if you scroll through the data read from the flash, there'll be words and file names. As this is the corrupted bias, I'm not going to save it. Instead I'm going to load up an image dumped from a working device. You'll find a link to this Silvercrest image in the video description. It's 16 megabyte, the same size as the flash memory's capacity. Again, you can scroll through and see references in the firmware to various files. And to program it into the flash memory, I now select the down arrow next to the Program IC button and select the Unprotect Erase Program Verify option and confirm my choice. This again does exactly what it says. It's the slowest option, but ensure that what's written in the flash memory matches the loaded image. This is going to take nearly 40 minutes, so I'll speed up this part of the video a lot. One programmed flash device, but has it rescued this camera? To test, I need to refit the camera and connect the cables. They slide in and lock into place with the tab. Some have a handy line to show they are in straight. I don't need to refit the front cover to test, I just need to hold the camera in place.
success and the speaker still works too, so I haven't damaged the cable. On the two Silvercrest cameras I've opened, there's what looks to be a badly placed piece of white tape. However, this appears to be there on purpose, so don't remove. Time to finish the reassembly. The front cover pushes back on and snaps into place. I check all the way around the edge. quick power on and it still works. One unbricked camera for not much more than the cost of a pint. Cheers. I hope you found that interesting and useful and until next time, goodbye. Let me see your identification. We don't need to see his identification. Follow me. Move along. Move along.